Hey guys, Woodruff here. So um, per request, um, there has been, um, you know, questions or people wanting more information on IV fluids. Um, I know there's more that I could do here, but this is just going to be a little short to um, help you to understand some of the differences between um, hypotonic, isotonic, and hypertonic fluids. Um, this can show up in a lot of different conditions across the lifespan. And otherwise, hopefully this is helpful to you. So let's start with hypotonic. So um, some I have some mnemonics in here too, maybe things to help you remember which one's which. Hypotonic, hypo is low. So um, anytime it's like tonic or tone, it's talking about how many particles um, are in these fluids. And when they're talking about particles, they're really talking about how much salt is in these fluids. So hypotonic is a low salt fluid or hypo is low, low sodium. Um, and so this is, you had to think about like, okay, well, who would need low sodium um, fluids? Well, someone who already has high sodium, like, you know, some people they need fluid, but they don't need the salt. Um, so sometimes we do hypotonic with people that need, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, what do you call it that um, have high sodium um, because we're trying to give them the fluid um, but, um, you know, we're, we're trying also to make sure that we don't get their sodium too high as well. Um, there's also some other fluids that are considered hypotonic just in nature, even though like if you actually look at them, they work in the body like an isotonic, which is like D5W. So um, that's um, dextrose 5% um, in water. Um, and that's officially a hypotonic, but in the body, it actually works like an isotonic. But we also use that as well for high sodium because um, it helps to um, give the, the fluid and stuff like that and lower, uh, get that um, uh, without raising the sodium up any higher. So anyway, but that's just a little side note for fun for the geeks out there like me. Um, so when you're thinking about fluids, you always want to think about, you know, first, okay, what's going on? Does this have a lot of sodium or just a little sodium? And you also want to think about, okay, what is this going to do for fluid? Because, um, you know, if you read textbooks, it's going to talk about intracellular fluid, which is ICF. And I think of cells as like little pots outside of the blood vessel. Um, and then there's the ECF, which is the extracellular fluid, um, which is the bloodstream. So um, you always want to think about where fluid is moving. So in hypotonic, when I give someone hypotonic fluid, so fluid that does not have a lot of sodium in it, what happens is it dilutes what's in the bloodstream. And then, you know, things want to start moving towards the cell. So when you give a hypotonic, uh, what, uh, what can happen as a result, especially depending on the quantity that you give, is is that fluid actually starts moving into the cell. Um, or I think of that like, you know, you can think of like POT that's in hypotonic, it's moving into the pot or into the cell. Um, so all of your fluid, that's where it is moving. So this is, like I said, great for someone who has high sodium. Um, that's most of the time that we use it. We don't see hypotonic used, um, you know, too often otherwise. But one thing to consider is if all my fluid is moving into my cell, that there can be brain swelling. So we do want to make sure that we're not overusing this. So you're going to look for, you know, changes in level of consciousness um, or changes in mentation and definitely keep a close eye on your neuro GCS and stuff like that. So then you're going to have isotonic fluid. And I think isotonic fluid is um, uh, what do you call it? You could think the ISO, it is okay. Um, or you could think the I, like this is me, this is what's in me. Isotonic fluid, this is similar to what's in my blood or in my plasma. Um, and so this is the fluid you're going to give nine times out of 10. It's the most often fluid used. Um, there's a few different examples I have here, 0.9% um, uh, saline, lactated ringers, plasmolite. Um, and these are usually used for fluid replacement. This is the, the great thing about this is that this type of fluid, unless it's used in excess, which can lead to fluid overload, normally just for this, this is a great, um, this is great for maintenance. It does not cause fluid shifts and it really replaces. If I'm having a problem where I'm dehydrated or there's not a lot of fluid in my bloodstream, this is the fluid that I want to use because it's going to stay right there. Um, like we talked about with hypo, the fluid is going to move into my cells. So I don't want that um, with most patients. I don't want a bunch of, you know, cells full of fluid. Most patients, they're low in fluid in their bloodstream. I'm trying to rehydrate them. So this is my rehydrating fluid. Um, the things to consider, you watch for fluid overload. The places that you're going to have fluid overload first are going to be legs and lungs. So you always want to think about, um, you know, doing a really good lung assessment, listening for those coarse crackles, um, ronchi, you know, those wet sounds. Um, you want to look in the legs for any sort of edema, whether pitting, 
reading or non. Um, and um, the other thing you want to consider is with some of these, there can be electrolyte imbalances, specifically, you know, if we talk about 0.9% um, saline, it's probably one of the most commonly uh, used um, uh, IV fluids that you're going to ever give. Um, you know, the only issue is that it can't have too much sodium and it actually, the sodium content in 0.9% saline is, um, is higher. It's like 154 or something like that per the textbook that we have, um, which is higher than, you know, what's considered normal, which is 135 to 145. So it can increase your sodium if you have it too much. And then it also has chloride in it. And so you can have um, hyperchloridemia, which, you know, you don't hear about too much, but um, it's still something to consider. Um, so this is mostly used for patients that have both fluid and electrolyte like sodium losses. So think like diarrhea vomiting. Um, so that way we're not just replacing their fluid, we're replacing these electrolytes that might be a little bit low. Um, that's when it usually has the best outcome. Um, then lactated ringers. Um, these, uh, the thing about lactated ringers that's different is that these have the sodium and the chloride like 0.9% saline does, but it also has lactate and potassium. And the thing about lactate and potassium is, is that these are really helpful for some patients like I have here, people that are in surgery, they might have those losses like when you're slashing through cells, or if you have burns where you have a loss of a lot of your cells in your tissues, um, or a lot of GI or gastrointestinal tract losses. Um, these fluids are great. Like, you know, th these are sometimes things that patients are missing, but like you know, they're great for those patients, but you have to consider any patient that has a filter issue. And remember your two filters in your body are your um, kidneys and your liver. So people that have liver um, problems, people that have um, high potassium already, because remember this has potassium in it, um, or people, anyone who has kidney issues, because generally we do not like to give a lot of potassium um, to people that are in like chronic kidney disease or complete kidney failure, um, or also those with severe fluid loss. And this also has to do with the fact that this has lactate in it. If my filters aren't working in my body, um, they're not going to be able, there's going to be a harder time converting that um, lactate into bicarbonate and using it the way that it's supposed to. So like, again, this fluid is great for people that have certain losses, changes in their cells, but just worry about people that have filter issues or people that have like severe fluid losses, like really, really, really hypotensive loss of fluid. Um, this might not be as appropriate. Now, just know as a nurse, you're never going to have to decide and be like, oh, do I decide between lactated ringers or saline? They're going to tell you what to order, but it is good to know because as you're administering this, you're the, also the last stop there. Um, you know, if you kind of notice, hey, like something's going up with my electrolytes or hey, something's not right, you should be kind of keeping an eye and watching these. It's also your job as a nurse to always be kind of watching like, are these fluids really necessary? Like we can keep fluids on a patient for a long period of time um, when it may not necessarily be needed anymore. So it's always our job to see like, what are we looking for with hydration? Hydration and generally hydration, like the best outcome I can see is like, what's their urine output? Are they showing signs of hydration? Now, most nursing students, if I ask them, they'll say like, oh yeah, skin turgor, um, stuff like that. But in all honesty, like you know, if you're if you're to the point where you have poor skin turgor and I'm like pinching you and your skin is staying upright, like that's a really late sign of dehydration versus other things. Like I mean, you can ask them, you can check their mucous membranes and maybe they're less dry. Um, but the best thing you can look at is blood pressure, you can look at urine output, things like that, that are showing what's going in is also coming out. And if the kidneys are happy, usually it's a good sign of, um, <clears throat> it's not true for all, sorry, I'm, I'm dying right here. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but um, it's not true for all patients, because some patients could be peeing for other reasons, or they're on other medications that are making them pee. But um, generally, you want to look at um, patients that are just on IV fluids and we're trying to see if they're hydrated, if they have good urine output, <clears throat> that's usually a sign that their kidneys are working. If their kidneys are working, the kidneys are very fluid dependent and flow dependent organ. And so, um, <clears throat> sorry, too much talking today. Um, since they're um, fluid and flow dependent, if my kidneys are working and they're making good urine output, it's usually a good sign that they're getting good pressure. If they're getting good pressure, it probably means my body's getting good pressure. So again, not always, but these are just little things. You have to kind of correlate a whole picture. And then also, like I mentioned, you can look at blood pressure. Um, if my blood pressure is low, usually flu, like volume is pressure. So if I have less volume, I have less pressure. So those are a few things you can look at. Um, last but not least, let's talk about hypertonic saline. So think hyper, think hypertone or hyper. There's a whole lot of sodium. Um, so this is great. Of course, there's a whole lot of sodium in this. So who, who needs a whole lot of sodium? Well, someone who doesn't have a lot of sodium. 
Um, so this is great for people that um, are hyponatremic or people that have head or brain injuries that might have um, a lot of swelling in the cells in their brain, because this is um, hypertonic saline can also be used as like an osmotic diuretic, which what that means, it's a fancy word for just saying it takes and like it kind of works like a it works like a diuretic where it takes in and leeches the extra fluid from where it's not supposed to be and helps you to diurese it. Um, so where does fluid go? It goes back in the bloodstream. And I just thought of this like five minutes ago and I love it because um, I'm such a nerd, but it says like, well, it says this, like I'm talking, like I'm not talking about myself. So think this, here's my mnemonic. So think hype puts water back in your pipe. You like it, right? It's pretty cool, right? All right. So, um, but as a whole, um, you want to think about where fluid, go, where fluid is going to go with all of these fluids. You want to know where fluid is going to go. So remember hypotonic, it's going into the pot, it's going into the cells. Isotonic, it's staying in. In, think maybe I it's staying in the pipes and then hypertonic um, hype puts water back in your pipe so it's going back in the bloodstream as well so with hypertonic and hypotonic fluid is moving and isotonic it's staying in the same place um, so the best example of this is going to be three percent saline just know that this is usually only given in the ICU these are the considerations for this one um, it's usually only given in the ICU because they need frequent monitoring we're usually checking their sodium every few hours um, you're really checking on their fluid status their blood pressure this is a very dangerous this is considered like a high risk medication um, and there's very specific parameters and stuff for it so um, it's just something to consider when um, we're looking at this is, is that a lot of these patients are usually going to need to be in the ICU. I think that's what I've got for you this time. I hope that this helped at least introduce the topic of fluids. I know all these topics can be a little bit tricky. Um, you know, the, the, like sometimes you kind of get into those, uh, you know, you, I always say you go off the deep end, you go a little too deep. Just try to always think about what does this really apply to me as a nurse and what's my nursing process? What am I going to be assessing? What am I going to be looking for? How am I going to know it worked? How do I know they had enough fluid, but not too much? So just really start thinking about those things. And um, yeah, again, I hope this helped. See you next time.